The value of the prize for me is in further publicizing the impact of our research work because this is work for people with diabetes and all the way through this voyage of discovery that I've had of finding out the cause of type 2 diabetes, how the condition develops, it's been very difficult for experts to accept to believe it because they have believed that type 2 diabetes always gets worse and worse. The beta cells always go downhill. So in fact, showing people, showing experts that the basic beliefs of the discipline are in fact not good, that is difficult. And so my work has been regarded as controversial and it's been necessary to press on and on and on to show that this actually makes a big difference to people with diabetes. So that's why we did the direct study and now that we have an NHS England national diabetes remission program for type 2 diabetes, the first year data for that are very exciting but of course bringing it to the attention of experts and to make a difference to how they see the world it's been fantastic to be able to give the Claude Bernard Lecture. I have to acknowledge that I had a great <laughs> professor of physiology when I was a medical student. He actually used the examples of Claude Bernard's work to show how logic could be applied to science how it was possible to make clear decisions about finding out what caused what. And so with that background, I had the opportunity to do a science degree in the middle of my medical course. So I did that. And so the scene was set when I first came across people with diabetes, type 2 diabetes, seeing these terrible problems of complications we needed to do something about it. So what was causing this condition? And when I looked in the textbooks, very confused, no real answer. And so I tried to understand the normal physiology of what happens when a person eats their meal. Where does the glucose go? What happens to the fat? And gradually the picture became clear. And so it's been a stepwise application of thought and logic to an important clinical question and it all comes the question comes from being observant about my patients and the answer is really for the benefit of patients that's a very good question because using this knowledge has to be judged in terms of the person sitting in front of that doctor. If that person wants to uh, escape from diabetes, if they're passionate about getting back to health, then they should do exactly what was done in our studies, to lose weight rapidly on a low calorie diet. They must not start an exercise program at the same time, because that tends to make it more difficult to lose weight rapidly and then they have to keep their weight steady. How much weight should they lose? Well, I think it's important for an individual to consider how heavy they were when they were 21 because all the weight gain since then has been fat because in adult life we don't grow more brain, we don't grow more liver, it's fat and yes muscle can change a bit but only with a lot of exercise so people have to consider if they have put on 10 15 20 kilograms in adult life 
maybe they need to think about losing a good bit of that. And it was a very rough estimation that led me to aim for 15 kilograms weight loss. But that seems to be very sound. And especially for people in China, I would add, if their body mass index is already quite low in the normal range, still they need to lose weight. Very important. But just a fixed amount of weight. Because in our most recent study, we show that the average weight loss needed is about 6.5% weight. So a person who is only, say, 60 kilograms in weight needs to go down only to about 55, 56. So you see, it's important to understand what the data mean. That is how this information can be applied directly, but also it makes the very important point that the management of type 2 diabetes is about weight loss. It's not about details of the diet. And if drugs are used, then those drugs ought to be compatible with weight loss. Fortunately, we now have very good medicines which will achieve this, but especially with the new powerful appetite suppressants, I think we need to think very carefully about how best to use them, because it is not feasible to use them all the time for a lifetime. It, that would be too expensive, even when those drugs become less expensive, come off patent. That's not the way forward. But used to help some people lose weight, used perhaps to help people manage their long-term weight control, they might be very useful. And I say the long-term weight control because the most difficult thing about keeping weight steady in long term is when something happens in life, when there is a stress, family illness or financial or whatever stress, then people lose focus on what they're eating and weight tends to go up. Perhaps these drugs are very useful when the stress has passed to bring it down again so that things can be re-achieved. So I think those are the main ways in which this information could be applied. Straightforward use of the diet, but also learning the lessons of that as to how to manage everybody, including those who would benefit from drugs. But some people get it at a body mass index of 19. Very few, but some. Some people at 22, some people at 42. Individuals have different thresholds. It shouldn't surprise, but there is so much attention to obesity defined as a fixed BMI cutoff, and that's not relevant for diabetes. So if a person has type 2 diabetes, they are too heavy for their own bodies. It's a very important concept. And so appreciating that and seeing the way forward as to be primarily weight loss in people of low body mass index as well as higher body mass index is very important.